I'm so bad to speak uh, English, so I probably show note so you can easily understand the text. So, hello everyone, I'm Gyeong. Uh, I'd like to introduce our package in eight minutes. Uh, it's my first talk at Julycon, and I'm supposed to do a demo, and I wish you enjoy this presentation. Here's the intro. Uh, I'm an, an iOS app developer. I made a this tool about five years ago to develop iOS app as more interactive way. And in this year, I began to make that kind of tool in using Julia and Swift. And let's look around the tool for iOS app development. Uh, suddenly, there's the uh, S-code. Uh, probably in this room, uh, the most of the audience are not familiar with this, but S-code has breeding iOS app developers, and it provides the way of debugging and prototyping and UI testing. And additionally, there are dynamic languages for the tool development. And Swift.jl, this is a package for iOS app development in Julia, but it does not provide the ability to directly call with this Swift. What about to make a Swift.jl? Uh, that is the, the ideal way, like a PyCall and, uh, and kind of CXS.jl. Uh, but I prefer to concentrate on my interests. So I'm shoveling on that with uh, continuous small improvements. Uh, so what is it made of? Uh, Julia is general purpose language. And Swift is also general purpose language. <coughs> and I've written both sides of IPC server and client. The IP server has written in Swift with the refraction. And the client side has written Julia with the metaprogramming. And these are two packages, uh, App Console and Swift.jl. So here are some tools to help us. It has code ID and simulator iPhone and terminal and Jupyter Notebook. Uh, there is a sample project uh, to run iOS app. Uh, it used to run IP server during for the learning app. And simulator iPhone. This is an actual device. I turn on my iPhone 10. And we need a terminal to run Julia Leper. And Jupyter Interactive Environment is essential for Julia programs. Using iJulia to run the Julia backend. Uh, I provide, uh, I, I prepare some screenshots. And uh, here's a sample project. Uh, after compile this project and uh, we we'll get a label for greetings that has a green background. And another way to that, uh, we just run IP server to receive the query expression from the client. Uh, let's run the project again. So this is a project to run app console. It's, it's a RP server to receive the uh, uh, any kind of expression from the Julia client. And, and I have two devices. This is a simulator, and uh, it's an iPhone, the movie recording screen. And I'm going to uh, try to change the label, the text, uh, using Swifter. OK. And I'm going to uh, contact the local address. <coughs> we got uh, a variable uh, simulate. This is uh, uh, some kind of a, a way of an uh, endpoint. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually it's a, a type of query result, and the initial function is uh, to create endpoint by connecting to a console server, and we need a uh, macro uh, query. Uh, it's actually to execute a query with expression. So now we query with a uh, uh, to change the label, 
like this. Label, text. Yeah, we got a uh, label. So we change uh, syntax like a Swift for changing with uh, like this. It's kind of a setting um, the text. And now uh, I prepared uh, Jupyter. Uh, uh, this is uh, another way to uh, for the uh, and kind of uh, Julia developer and programmer knows uh, familiar with this Jupyter in interactive. So I prepared for these mind types. And we have two endpoints for iPod and the simulator. And I tried some changing uh, colors by uh, providing the way of similar this command. So the first thing is changing the text. Yeah, that's OK. And now we began to change the color. And it's a uh, similar way in changing color by this expression with the query macro. And we get the label. So displaying the actual UI uh, label as display on Jupyter Notebook. And the arrays of query also work like this. So I got a uh, label from the simulator and from the iPhone, yeah, from that. Yes. And we can uh, do with the list compression Naturally, uh, the syntax is inside of this is a macro, and this is for statement. And change the background from the simulated one. Uh, it probably impossible from using Xcode itself, but uh, I tried this kind of stuff by implementation of some kind of a macro uh, magic. So, so I tried this. So the result of this is uh, from the simulator's labels background color and into the iPhone mm, background color. Yeah. It's really useful when I uh, make an application. And I just changed from the simulator and into directly uh, to change the resource and, and kind of things into uh, iPhone uh, device, real device. And what about change uh, using for loop? Yes. And uh, I tried to change the color again. Yes, yeah. And you also provide a map function. And like this. OK. And scripting is a similar one. To download this, Julia. OK. And just run this script is the scripting. <coughs> And more examples of the site. And here's the summary of this presentation. Uh, it's a lesson for continuous small uh, improvements, like to keep the compatibility with the evolution of Julia. Uh, thanks to all of uh, Julia committers and contributors and communities. And as you see, uh, lots of ideas have discovered with Julia and have been discussed, solved beautifully with these amazing communities. Uh, here are references. And questions?
Yes. Is the Julia code actually running on the iPhone, or is that just Swift? Uh, the question was Julia code is actually running on uh, device. No, it's just passing the expression and like an IP stem. So uh, uh, I passing the expression into uh, Julia side, and when I call the server side, I just pass <coughs> the array of symbols into server side, and server has the treat to some uh, using reflection, shift reflection as a runtime uh, way of uh, some uh, in, um, processing things. Yeah. Uh, sorry? Like, like what you have done in this query stuff, you're actually able to do the result inside of the IDP notebook? Can, can you go back to the notebook? Notebook, yeah. So, what I see here in this, this green box is actually what is displayed on the iPhone directly. How do you transfer this to? Ah, yeah. The question was. Uh, how to display these things, okay. Uh, it's probably uh, done by support uh, Jupyter MIME ties uh, using, uh, I support uh, uh, Jupyter MIME types like this. And, and Julia's uh, providing the way of display MIME ties of, of uh, uh, with a multiple dispatch like this, and you can display on Jup on Jupiter easily. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, there are no, there's no more questions. Uh, thanks for questions. Uh, thanks, Hukyo. Uh, one more uh, round of applause for you. Thank you.